Hey everyone, come find me time again. This week we're in Hosea and Joel. Now we say Joel, but his name is probably best pronounced Yoel, as in Jehovah and Elohim combined. That's kind of what his name means. Um, we'll get to that when we talk about Joel. But we say Joel, uh, more commonly in his day he would have been known as Yoel. There you go, in Hebrew. But anyway, let's get into Hosea. Uh, Hosea, we're going to look at chapters 1 through 3 because they kind of all go together. I'm just going to do that. Um, this is, you know, can sound harsh. And if you read this, you're going to be like, what the heck? But bear with because it's a good lesson. So I've entitled this one, A Prophet, A Prostitute and The Real Lesson. So in chapter 1 of Hosea, now Hosea's name, you might think, oh, that sounds like Hosanna or um, like Jesus. And it is because it comes from the same base word meaning to deliver and salvation. So it should sound familiar. But anyway. Um, the theme of Hosea is the love that God has for us, and that is so true. So in chapter 1, he's told in verse 2 to go and take a wife of whoredoms. Now, so in other words, go and take a prostitute for your wife. And you think, why would the Lord say that? It's like, well, you don't know why she was there. You don't know what's going on with her. We don't know the complete picture. So, you know, go with it. And so he did this, and he went and took a, a, a woman called Goma. And we already feel for her with her name, but anyway. So she gave him a son, and they were happy for a time. And then she conceived again and bare a daughter. And the name of the daughter is Lo Rahama, which means um, not having obtained mercy. And then she has a son called Lo Ami, which is not my people. Now, both of these indicate that maybe these younger two children aren't Hosea's. She's been cheating on him. Um, and then she leaves. She's gone. Doesn't want to be there anymore. She's like, no, I'm going to go back to my old life. Um, and she went, She goes to follow, this is in chapter 2, goes to follow her previous lovers, goes back to them, goes back to the life she had. Because that's more appealing to her than being at home with three kids. Um, again, we don't we don't know this woman, so you know, bear with. Um, and then instead of like just kicking her out, because if you were asked in this situation, what would you do? Like if this was a family member and someone had done this to them, you'd be like, kick her to the curb, get rid of her, right? Done. Don't even be around her. But then Jose is like, actually. I'm going to try and win her back. I'm going to, like, do things for her. I'll give her a vineyard. Um, and I'll, you know, like, I'll do, I'll get jewels for her. Whatever she needs, I'll bring her back. So she comes back. He lures her back. Because in 14, he says, Therefore, behold, I will allure her and bring her into the wilderness and speak comfortably unto her and tell her what I'm going to give her. So he, like, makes that effort to reconcile and get her back. So she comes back for a little while. Um... Comes back for a little bit, and then suddenly he comes home one day, and she's gone again. And that happens two or three times, probably. Um, but he still has mercy on her, and still says that. And then in chapter 3, now this is where the good stuff comes in. He actually says, <coughs> actually tells us that it's not so much a story about his marriage, and the way that his wife behaves, but it's more of a story of the Lord and us. Us being Goma, the one who keeps leaving the Lord, even though he gives everything to us, even though he offers us complete forgiveness and wants to, you know, like, bring us back in and welcome us back. And there's there's no, like, it's complete forgiveness every time, and yet we still leave. So he says, um, oh, sorry, bump that. He goes, uh, yeah, in, in chapter 3, um, then said the Lord unto me, Go yet, love a woman, beloved of her friend, yet an adulteress. According to the love of the Lord, toward the children of Israel, who look to one and to look to other gods and love flagons of wine. So this is the same scenario as in Christ being the bridegroom, married to a bunch of us that like to go and be mischief and leave him all the time. But he always takes us back, always forgives us. Um, he says there, so I bought her for me, oh, because she actually ends up in captivity, even. Like, whatever situation she gets herself into, she's captive and now a slave. And Hosea goes and rescues her and buys her back. And you think, well, I've 
because Saviour's done that for us too. We end up in captivity to our earthly emotions and, and, and vices, and yet he will buy us back, and he bought us back with the atonement. So it is the same thing. Um, he says to her, Thou shalt abide for me many days, thou shalt not play the harlot, and thou shalt not be for another man, so I will also be for thee. But then he likens it again to the children of Israel in Christ. Um, and then in verse 5 of chapter 3 says, Afterwards shall the children of Israel return and seek the Lord their God and David their king, and shall fear the Lord and his goodness in the latter days. Reminding us about seeking like goodness again and, and just coming back. It's an unfailing covenant love. Um, so think about this. So it's, it's interesting to read in that it might not be apparent like straight away the story of it, um, but that's the story that I just told you there. And this is just what it is. Like it, it, it's how we are. So Hosea speaks of his personal revelation to go and marry a prostitute, a whore. They have a son and for a time they're happy, you know. Um, two kids more later, kids that probably aren't Hosea's, she leaves to go back to the life she knew. Well, she's probably already back there if those kids aren't Hosea's, right? So Hosea forgives and like wins her back, only to have her leave for worldly things again, a pattern that continues. So much so, as I said, that she actually ends up in captivity and slavery and he goes and buys her back this time. So in chapter 3, he tells us that this story is not so much about him and Goma, rather it is us and the Lord. Like that's why he's saying the story and telling us this um, situation. So how many times do we leave Christ for the allures of the world? And how many times are we welcome back? Every single time, right? Um, always. This is unfailing covenant love. And that's what we're going to talk about this week. Is how do we have that unfailing covenant love? How do we like use that to not be Goma and go and do that? How do we use that to stay with the Lord? How does that bless us? How does that make survival possible? Um, and just that relationship we have with Christ. And that a lot of people will find themselves in the story, myself included, where, you know, we are faithful to Christ, but the minute it gets hard or boring, we're gone. And it's that developing that deeper relationship so that in those boring or hard moments, we cling closer to Christ rather than turn away. And this has been happening a lot with, like, coming back to church after COVID. A lot of people are like, oh, it's just so much easier to stay away. And actually, it might seem that way, but it really isn't. If you stand back and look at a bigger picture, it's not. It's better to turn to Christ than away from Christ. But that's all something we have to learn in our personal journeys. So it's a really good lesson in there. Now, Carol M. Stevens, she was the previous first counselor of the Release Society Presidency in 2012. She said, God, never lose a sight of our eternal potential, even when we do. And I think that's so important to remember. Hosea never lost sight of Goma's potential to be a good woman and a good wife and a good mother, even if she did. She lost it. He didn't. And it's the same with Christ and us. Christ never, and Heavenly Father and Heavenly Mother, they never lose sight of our potential, even if we can't see it or if we lose sight of it. They don't. So rather than turn away, turn to. Way better for you. So that's the overview of that one. So hang around. We're going to go over to chapter 6. And look at this because it's very similar to what President Nelson's been teaching us a lot lately and what a lot of our leaders have been talking about. And it's very important. I'll see you there.